The protagonist of the movie is Tadeusz Teddy Pietrzykowski, a renowned Polish boxing champion who is currently imprisoned at the newly established Auschwitz concentration camp. In the opening scene, Teddy is shown standing in a line, closing his eyes and reminiscing about his past when he used to spend his days practicing boxing in his backyard. It is revealed that one fateful day, some German soldiers forcefully invaded his home and brought him to this concentration camp. Within the confines of the camp, Teddy as well as the other prisoners endure horrendous treatment, compelled to engage in laborious work throughout the day. In return, they aren't given a proper place to sleep and are crammed into a single room. Moreover, they just receive a watery soup as their meal, which is clearly not enough for them to work for the whole day. As a result of this torture, the prisoners contract deadly diseases and pass away one by one. Even teenagers aren't exempt from this treatment. Among them is a 15-year-old boy named Yannick, who is often bullied by his fellow inmates. During one workday, an elderly man gathers some fellow prisoners and tells them about his plan to escape from the concentration camp. Unfortunately, a guard overhears their conversation. So he approaches the elderly man from behind and violently strikes him on the head with a heavy rod, resulting in his demise. This frightens everyone present there, but it appears that they are used to such barbaric acts. Later that day, Yannick approaches Teddy and recognizes him as the best boxer from Warsaw. The young boy then reveals that he is a big fan of Teddy, recalling how he used to watch his boxing performances on television. However, Teddy cautions Yannick against discussing their identities, as this concentration camp shows no regard for anyone's individuality. The next day, Teddy is assigned to work at the residence of a German general. Seizing this opportunity, he discreetly stuffs some apples inside his clothes. Afterwards, he shares an apple with Yannick, who selflessly offers it to an elderly man. Witnessing this act of kindness, Teddy passes another apple to Yannick, urging him to eat it himself. Suddenly, a group of German soldiers, having learned about the stolen apples, storm in and arrest Teddy, Yannick, and the old man. They are taken to an execution site where the soldiers carry out ruthless punishment upon those who defy their orders. At first, the old man is instructed to place an apple on top of his head. However, instead of shooting at the apple, the soldier takes aim at the old man's head and tragically shoots him to death. The apple still hits the ground, and Isaac Newton is still right. After this, Teddy is also asked to position the apple in his own head, but the latter refuses and opts to eat it instead. Surprisingly, Teddy's display of courage impresses the soldiers, so they decide to spare his life. However, they seize Yannick and subject him to a brutal punishment right in front of Teddy's eyes. This pains our protagonist a lot, but he cannot do anything about it. That night, Teddy, who is still overwhelmed by the guilt, regrets involving the young boy in all of this, which makes him unable to sleep. Meanwhile, a heart-wrenching scene unfolds as a large group of Jewish people, including little kids, are herded into a gas chamber. A soldier then pours lethal gas into the chamber, mercilessly snuffing out the lives of all those inside. As days pass, the prisoner's situation grows increasingly difficult, as they are forced to commence their brutal labor before sunrise with even less food than before. One day, a soldier tosses a piece of food onto the ground, triggering a desperate struggle among the starving prisoners to acquire it. The soldier seems to enjoy this scene. So, he devises a new plan. He orders two prisoners to engage in a contest of slapping, promising that the winner will receive an additional piece of food. After the first round, Teddy is drawn into the competition. Using his skills as a boxing champion, he easily dodges his opponent's attacks and lands the winning blow. Dana White then appears and says, I think I can make some money off of this. Shortly after, a German officer, who happens to be a boxer as well, arrives at the scene and challenges Teddy to a first blood match. The latter agrees right away, and so the match begins. From the very start, the officer launches relentless attacks against Teddy, but our hero skillfully evades every blow, and when the opportunity arises, he delivers a powerful punch to the officer's face, securing victory. Impressed by Teddy's technique and fearlessness, the German officer respects his skill and rewards him with a substantial piece of bread. Teddy then returns to his fellow prisoners and shares the food with them. As everyone is happily eating, Teddy notices that Yannick is suffering from a persistent cough and cold due to the lack of proper food and rest. The illness gradually gradually worsens, escalating into a fever that eventually develops into pneumonia. Deeply concerned for the boy's well-being, Teddy approaches the same German officer the following morning, pleading for some food and medicine. The officer agrees to help, but stipulates that Teddy must comply with his condition. Following this, the officer escorts Teddy to his superiors and tells them about his exceptional boxing skills. Recognizing the absence of any form of entertainment within the camp, the officer proposes organizing a boxing match where Teddy would face off against other fighters. Initially, the superiors expressed skepticism 
skepticism, doubting whether the skinny Teddy can endure even a minute in the ring. However, the officer manages to persuade his superiors, convincing them to give it a try. The scene then cuts to the first boxing match within the camp, where Teddy is assigned to face another skilled boxer. As the match begins, Teddy finds himself cornered by his opponent in the first round. However, he makes a strong comeback in the second round, delivering a series of powerful punches that ultimately leads him to victory. This achievement not only impresses the German superiors, but also the son of the German general, Rudy, who is among the spectators. As a reward, Teddy is provided with extra food and water. He is also promoted to work in the horse stable, where he is assured with more food. Later that night, Teddy visits the camp's infirmary to have his wounds treated. Upon finishing his treatment, he approaches the nurse and requests medicine for pneumonia. Unlike the camp guards, the nurse appears to be kind, so she gives Teddy a bunch of different medications. After this, Teddy heads to the sick ward, where numerous workers are in critical condition. He administers pneumonia medicine to Yannick, and hands the remaining medication to a healthcare worker present there. Now employed at the horse stable, Teddy finds himself with more leisure time, which he utilizes to practice boxing. After a few weeks, Yannick finally recovers and Teddy arranges for him to work at the infirmary. There, the young boy meets a beautiful girl named Halcia, and the two quickly become friends. Over time, Teddy gains a good shape due to improved food and rest. Yannick's situation also improves, but the rest are prisoners, still suffering in the same way. They are subjected to inhumane treatment just like animals, and Jewish people are cruelly executed on a daily basis. Moreover, the lack of proper medication and care in the sick ward leads to a lot of deaths. Because of this, Teddy makes every effort to assist his fellow prisoners. He emerges victorious in all the matches he is placed in, and shares his rewarded food with his fellow inmates. In addition, he secretly transports vital medicines from the infirmary to the sick ward, in order to provide some relief to the suffering inmates. One day, German soldiers summon a formidable opponent from another prison to face Teddy, hoping to see a new victor. However, Teddy's exceptional agility and boxing skill proves to be dominant over the big guy, ultimately securing him the victory. As a result, Teddy appears to be rewarded with a more generous portion of food, which he selflessly shares with his fellow inmates as he has done before. Call him Teddy Rosenfeld because this dude is smooth. In the next scene, Rudy falls ill and the doctor reveals that he has typhoid. Sadly, the young boy passes away because of the disease, leaving the general devastated. The following morning, Teddy observes lifeless bodies being carried outside the camp gate. To his dismay, the dead bodies turn out to be of those who Teddy defeated in the boxing match. Overwhelmed by guilt, he decides to no longer participate in any more fights. However, when Yannick gets to know of this, he urges Teddy to keep going, saying that he is the prisoner's only hope. That same night, as usual, a group of Jewish people are ordered to form a line and enter the gas chamber. This time, the group includes Halcia, who had been caught stealing food. One of the soldiers holds her at gunpoint, demanding she remove her clothing. Unexpectedly, the girl seizes the soldier's gun and shoots him instead. In a retaliatory response, the remaining soldiers open fire, tragically killing it. Elsia. Amidst the chaos, other innocent prisoners also fall victim to the gunfire. Yannick witnesses the horrifying incident from a distance and is devastated by the loss of Elsia. Later, it is revealed that the German general has also sustained a gunshot wound to his hand, due to which he is taken to the infirmary. There, he learns that Yannick was assigned to work in the infirmary without proper authorization. As a result, the general takes Yannick into custody and subjects him to torturous treatment. When Teddy learns of this the following day, he approaches the higher-ranking officials and pleads for the release of the young boy. However, the officials deny his request. Determined to secure Yannick's freedom, Teddy proposes a deal. He offers to face the best German boxer, Hammerschlag, in exchange for Yannick's release. Teddy further stipulates that if the officials reject the deal, he will stop participating in any further matches. After a bit of deliberation, the officials decide to accept the deal. However, they have a plan in mind, so that Teddy doesn't win the match. The fight takes place in the evening, and both the opponents get ready. As the match starts, Teddy struggles to counter the barrage of attacks thrown by Hammerschlag. In the first round, he is easily overpowered by his adversary. However, in the second round, Teddy manages to land some significant punches on Hammerschlag. Witnessing their top boxer being beaten, the officials discreetly signal the referee to announce a round break. The officials then make Teddy drink a mysterious liquid before starting the third round. This unknown drink soon shows its effect, causing Teddy's vision to get blurred and making him feel dizzy. Turns out Hammerschlager is even more potent than Goldschlager. Exploiting this advantage, Hammerschlag delivers a powerful blow that knocks Teddy to the ground. With this, the German officials declare their boxers the winner, concluding the match instantly. Shortly after, Teddy regains his footing and requests to continue fighting. In response, the soldiers bring forth a brutally injured Yannick and toss him in front of Teddy. The higher-ranking officials then command Teddy to fight against the boy, or else face the threat of Yannick being shot and 
killed. Our hero hesitates for a while, as he doesn't want to harm his best friend any further. Unfortunately, because of this slight deliberation, one of the soldiers ruthlessly shoots Yonek and kills him on the spot. Teddy is also tied to a pole and hanged there for a whole night. This is the first story I've read since coming back from vacation. These vibes suck. The following morning, a soldier releases Teddy from his restraints and instructs him to get back to work. However, he instead makes his way to the area where the deceased bodies are being cremated. With a heavy heart, Teddy searches for Yonek's remains, but only manages to find a toy that belonged to him. Clutching it, Teddy mourns for a while, but then gathers his resolve and makes a courageous vow to defeat Hammerschlag. With newfound determination, he then enters the boxing ring where Hammerschlag is fighting other prisoners. To everyone's astonishment, Teddy challenges the big guy to a duel, and the latter promptly accepts. Notably, a guest in the audience is revealed to be the warden of another prison, who recognizes Teddy from their encounter in Warsaw. Confident in Teddy's abilities, the warden places a bet in his favor. The match commences, and initially, Teddy deliberately endures a barrage of punches from his opponent without retaliating. His face becomes stained with blood, yet he maintains a smile. But when he gets the perfect chance, Teddy counterattacks with a couple of solid punches that knocks the best German boxer to the ground, ultimately securing him victory. The prisoners in the audience erupt with cheers, hailing Teddy as the champion of the Auschwitz camp. Impressed by his prowess, the warden of the other prison approaches the general and asks Teddy's transfer to their facility. As a result, Teddy is freed from the Auschwitz camp the very next day and transferred to another prison. In a post credit scene, it is revealed that Teddy continued to fight in other concentration camps. Years later, he is ultimately liberated by the Allied forces. After returning to his hometown, Teddy starts training young children in the sport of boxing.